Okay, continuing on here with my series. I have not played in this one, nor have I put it up on the channel, so I'm going to put this up and label it uh, again. To read through these, basically it's the hunt for the longest European eel <clears throat> that's there. You can only use feeder tackle. You must release the fish. All score will be gained. So, in other words, you don't have to keep it to score, obviously, because you'd get a penalty anyway. So, rod stand during a tournament is prohibited. That means you get one feeder rod in your hand. The winner is determined by the total length of the three longest European eel caught to the end of the competition. Secondary score, once again, as most of them, is based on the single longest, not the biggest, the longest fish caught. Uh, the rewards, again, don't seem to be overwhelming, but uh, there is, if you're missing any of that stuff, uh, you got a X-Series glow in the dark bobber, uh, X-Series sinker, of course, the 16-foot 16 or 6.0 crankbait would probably be nice to have if you've lost that. Uh, as well as the uh, X-Series 2.0 Bass Jig. Again, only the top three will pay in these things. Uh, just making sure I haven't missed any details. Nope, it's catch-all scoring. It is one hour long. So, uh, Rumor also has it, uh, this one can be really, really slow. But I'm going to go ahead and go in there and try to just give it a try again. I'm not putting these things up as a guide. It's just me going through and playing them myself. I do put up tips if I end up getting better at any of these things uh, as well. So uh, everybody's kind of saying the large cut bait on a 2 aught That may be what I start. I did bring up various things that I, uh, I know in the past would work. Um, but doesn't mean they will be the best for this competition. However, I am unorthodox. I don't like to conform to everything else. So I do think that uh, it doesn't hurt to experiment with new things in this game, guys. So... I'll probably start with the large cut bait see how I do. Uh, big part of me wants to actually throw a mix on and put it in my feeder. I don't know that I'll do that just yet, but I might if it seems to get too slow. It is a European lake, so you would think some of the catfish destroyer, uh, big octopus, that sort of thing might work in a feeder. Who who really knows? But uh, we'll go ahead and get, and get and get started. Thanks, Fork. I appreciate it, man. Also, on a side note, a couple of the guys I talked to said you could catch as little as zero fish or as much as six. So, it's one of those comps like a, that could probably drag on and on if uh, if it's really slow. Hey, Josh, what's up, buddy? Another in the Crank the River. This will be the official last one that I've had to put up and label. Now, I might go back in the f future... Uh, if I find a system that works really well on one of them or something, I might go back and do a uh, such and such redone, so to speak. Oh, what peak is this? Doesn't seem to be a horrible peak, but it is cloudy. All right, well. What up, Kinski? And I am, as far as the setup, I brought a couple different setups. I'm actually going to try the, the all around, try to match up. You know, I think these things, the uniques go six to eight pounds or something like that. I did put on braid. I do have a, oh, I have a fluorocarbon later. Do I have not have a mono later? I actually wanted a mono later. Ooh. It's not, okay, I do have a mono later. All right, I'm actually going to try a mono later. I'm wondering if I should trim that down. Hook size, the odd part is, in my opinion, you could probably go as far as hashtag one or two and then probably all the way to uh, the 2.0. But a lot of people are saying the 2.0 because you're looking for the bigger fish, uh, even if your bite rate's slower. But I know one of my marks that I had was, I'm pretty sure it was a hashtag two. That, again, is up to you guys to figure that thing out. But I am going to go ahead and trim my monoliter just a little bit. Fork is saying, yes, it definitely can be slow. Again, the one thing I found out on my friends list, again, I've said this before, uh, 
to me, this one doesn't seem like it would be too satisfying, but I'm not going to, I'm going to try to go into this with an open mind. Again, that's a cool thing about my friends list and fishing planet in general. What one man's comp they may not like, this might be your cup of tea in other words. So we'll just have to see how this goes. Oh, he's never played saltwater giants. So I'm just going to throw it way out there. See what happens. Hey, Hot. How's it going, man? Now, what I don't know... First deal was 35 minutes in. Out. Okay, guys. Following along with anybody that might happen to watch this a year from now or whenever. My buddy Josh is saying it took him 35 minutes to get one, one eel. So I'm guessing this is one of those ones you have to pace yourself. Also, my gamer pal Richard had mentioned you probably want a cup of coffee for this as well. Or something to keep yourself awake. Or a nice glass of wine. You just got a tip though. What do we got, Josh? Don't play in it? <laughs> Josh. I was waiting for the don't play in it tip. You just got a tip, 2-0, large cut bait. That's exactly what I got on, Josh. Has anybody tried huge cut bait? Because that's what I'm about to try. The odd part that I've noticed about huge cut bait, it seems to have a buff on it. Almost no matter what, even whether it's big bow fin or any other comp that you might play in. 400 out. Oh, he got that tip for me. I was wondering. 400 foot out, bro. I don't think I can cast 400 feet. Maybe with maybe with huge cut bait on it. The one problem I'm going to have, anybody that watches this back, and you may have the same issue. Any guys that's watched me fish in the past, I get really impatient. The one thing I do like about the flounder is I can, uh, yeah, I do have the big ollie with me. I do have uh, the tendency to, I like, the one thing I like about the flounder, I like to reel it in a little bit because I get extremely bored in comps like this. So I think patience is probably going to be the, uh, patience is definitely a virtue in general. This is probably going to play uh, pivotal in this thing. How long can you sit and wait on your bait? And again, kind of on the, I don't I can't really compare the flounder, so to say, but I would assume the eel, since we're fishing on the bottom, they are bottom femurs now. Okay, Josh has officially caught his second one. And Josh is saying 400 feet out. What I'll probably do is give it three or four minutes where I'm at. I may throw on huge cut bait just to see if that makes any difference. Okay, Fork's saying dragon. Does it work on the eel too? That's why I was, because I, I love dragging in the bites. I did it last night on my uh, my carp thing even, if you guys watch that at the end there. But I, I don't know if these things have a, a spook factor, so to speak. I know these fish are kind of finicky. I know them. I'm pretty sure, or it might have been the pike. I think it was the young pike on here, and the uh, unique eel was the last thing I did on the recatch on this lake. Yeah, if I get a nice one, Tony, no guarantees, buddy. What I'm hearing, this one here is really, really uh, test the guy's patience. So, obviously, if I get one, I will pass that on. Yeah, I'll have to look, Josh. I, I literally don't even know if I have a, a mark left. I might be at fourteen ninety nine or fifteen hundred on my marks. I literally have to go back and erase some marks somewhere again. I don't know. I wish Fish and Planet would add about two hundred and fifty marks, or at least a hundred. Give us another. Bump us up to sixteen fifty. Bump us up to sixteen fifty, Fish and Planet. All of us are in desperate need. We need more marker buoys. 
Okay, it seems like I've sat here about four minutes rambling on and I still have not even had a bite. The funny thing, Fork, if you would have actually looked at my Bobber Burbit, my one I put up as a play along and I didn't even know about the Troy then, minus the crappy performance I did yesterday, but I think my bite rate was messed up. I actually had, that was one of my higher viewed uh, play alongs was that Bobber Burbit because nobody had figured that one out hardly. And I had excellent marks on that Bobber Burbit. I'm thinking that's where Tony might have got his marks. Okay, now, I have been patient as a guy could be. So I'm going to try two things. As you can see, now you might, it might be a mistake. Maybe you sit there 10 minutes and you don't get a bite. That is such a hard thing for me to do. Again, I'm not putting these things up as guides. This is just my personal experience going in this first time. If I help you, I help you. Sometimes, again, you're going to learn more from what I did wrong. You can call me Mr. Impatient if you like. But I'm having trouble just sitting there waiting for nothing to happen. Yes! Bait coins for days. I just completed the challenge. Well, it was worth the trip, boys, of two bait coins. All right, here. I'm going to try the big Ollie. Josh is saying to cast out 400 feet. We'll see if my big Ollie can go the distance. 400 feet seems like a long way. Let me double check and make sure this is where one of my marks are. Oh, where's my other? There's my there's my unique uh, nine pounder at that. There's one of my unique marks. If anybody was happen to use it, I'll go to it on the second spot. Uh, but I did note there that I used hook two, not a two o. For whatever purposes, I don't know if that makes a difference or not. I will try a different hook size if something doesn't happen. Uh, Josh, I think, has sent an extra mark for anybody that might need this. I don't know that I can mark it. Uh, I can't mark it. I'm out of marks. Is there anything that I can erase? Oh, I had a nail right here. What the hell? Oh, that's when I was spotting. I'm racing my roach mark. Actually, there's an ill right there, right off the bank. That was from me spotting. That's another thing that you might play around with. I was told not to do so, but I'm pretty sure I spotted those in uh, when I was doing the recatch because I have two extra spots for that. But uh, anyway, we'll go ahead and continue on. I'm going to go ahead and see if I can pick up Josh's marks real quick. I've got room for none at this point, Fork. Okay. Josh got a trophy eel. My guess is, guys, this could also be one of those weird comps that uh, it's going to depend on how far they're out. So, well, that's about as far as I can cast with my big Ollie, Josh. Maybe I needed a bigger sinker or something. Does anybody know if you're supposed to use a mono leader or a floral leader? And also, when in doubt, if anybody's really serious about these things, you could always... YouTube, Krellic. Krellic will teach you more than I do, I'm sure. But part of me really feels after doing the recatch here and spotting for stuff, 
I don't think I ever spotted any unique up close, but I do think that you could now, since the competition's uh, not a volume thing, it's actually a quality. Uh, in other words, if you could probably get, I would assume the guys that win this probably get two uniques, maybe one trophy along with it. And again, I am just a guy off the street learning and, and learning this game. I have not played this game six or ten years like all the other guys have. I'm just a casual player coming in to try my luck. I'm a little more than a casual player now, but I'm a casual player in this. And I don't want to speak too early, but the fun factor in this one is probably going to depend on the person playing. If you're a kind of guy that's really patient and you enjoy sitting there and just chilling, maybe playing on your phone at the same time, setting your controller down, waiting for it to vibrate, or listening to, hoping that your bell goes off at some point, this is probably a competition for you. Now, if you enjoy lure fishing or you enjoy fast-paced fishing, this probably is not the comp for you. Josh, is your round over? And did you get a, uh, what was your fish count? Did you try anything unorthodox? Did you stick with a, the 2-0? It seems like everybody's saying 2-0 large cut bait. Did we try any freshwater prawns or anything different? Any tips that somebody could pick up on in the uh, chat if they happen to watch this back? Josh still has 12 minutes left, and he's caught 16 ill, he said. I'm kidding, guys. I don't think he caught 16. Josh attempted to use shrimp, and he says exit strategy now. He caught a goby on a shrimp. On a 2-0? Or was he using a baby one? Hey, Caden, welcome to the stream, man. And Trey, and Caden is at the uh, Quanchkin going for, or no, where is he? Florida alligator guy right now. And a trophy flounder on small cut. Yeah, I think being able to isolate. And also, uh, again, anybody that's played this game long enough, you don't know what about to do with the bots dragonflies. But they usually, for me, mean not very good luck. So... I'll give it approximately a minute after this, and I'm going to have to do something different, rotate spots, uh, reel in a little shorter. Trying to get that zombie cat. Yeah, that's a fun mission. And Tony's passing along. He did get 28th in the Mighty 3, and he had, but he did have 5 unique. Good fishing, Tony. If I ever played in the Mighty 3 and I only caught uh, three uniques and they were all 21 pounds, I would take that over seven or eight unique. No, he had six uni. Okay, he's readjusted, guys. Tony, it's official. He had six unique in the Mighty 3. Good fishing, buddy. I don't think it'll let me look at personal information like that if I look up somebody's uh, it blue screens it because a lot of those are confidential I think and Bergy is joining my room he's going to give me tips as we go I heard
Jared Berge has got this one dialed in. He almost pedestals every other time he plays in it, he said. Okay, now I will say this. If I, if I do happen to catch an eel at any time in this, it's probably going to be the most exciting fish I've caught uh, today. I am approximately, well, I am almost 15 minutes in. And I have not catch one yet. <laughs> Bergy says it's the complete opposite. He came here for tips on me. Bro, like I said, I don't put these up as guides. This is not a guide. This is a play along. So we're playing along, Bergy. We'll have to learn off one another, buddy. We got a bunch of people in the chat here claiming that they're, they're ill slayers from way back when. Now, what I don't know is... What I'm going to guess is maybe these things are a little closer in. I'm going to pull this into about 315 because I don't seem to be having luck at 330. Bait pulled too far twice. Was mine? If it did, I didn't notice. What's that usually mean? The bait's too big or the hook? That, oh, yours. I was going to say, I'll mess it on mine, Josh. That usually means you got one around it, at least. I do notice that that's normally an eel when that happens. It does that at, uh, when I was doing the recatch, I don't know if you guys had done the recatch at Tiber. I did have a difficult time uh, getting that one, and I finally got it. But that does usually mean, oh, that means you, used, yeah, that's what I was going to say if it was pulled away. That does usually mean it's a, a nice eel. Bergy, what I'm thinking is I'm about to put a mix on my stuff. That's what I'm thinking, Berg. Or this spot here just sucks. Okay. We do know the ill exists. Somebody in the, the lobby caught a Bob Nud. Bob Nud, we do know that the fish exist because there's a 7.6 pounder there. So these things do exist if you happen to watch this back. After this alligator gar not hitting, going to go to the Congo, I think. And the Congo. I don't think the Congo have ill, bro. I'm rocking here at the old, good old, one of the top maps in the game. The lovely, the adorable, Ghent. What's up, Richard? I'm putting this up as a play along, fellas. Like I said, these are not guides. This is just me struggling through this like most people would if you've never played in it. Yeah, this one. This one you're 100% sure, certain. Uh, I agree with you wholeheartedly, Richard, that I had a full cup of coffee and it is now gone. I'm wide awake. I don't know how. 
It's not from the fissing, though. It's from the caffeine. Richard, have, all jokes aside, have you noticed if they're... Josh was saying 400 feet. Is it anything like the flounder where sometimes they might be 275 out, they might be 350 out, that sort of thing? It's a slow comp, so don't be hasty. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, Caden. I missed that. Yeah, no, I'm a really high level. Don't mean nothing for an ill comp, though. Oh, I feel like somebody's talking to me. You've hooked your uni at 150 feet. Okay. See, I've been used to spot for these things. That's what's driving me crazy. You probably don't have it, Caden, but the the buzz bait with a, a, a crawl or something like that will get them if you want to do it on a lure. Yeah, see, that's what I'm wanting to do is drag. I feel like I'm learning the flounder comp all over, but I'm just sitting here doing nothing. And no fork, I played just a little bit this morning for about 10 minutes, and I was able to get him to hit a huge cut bait. And I might even have the marker to prove it. I'll look when I pull this in. I'm also thinking maybe a mono leader is better than floral leader in this thing, but I, I don't know. Oh, I know, Fork. I was just messing with you. I, all jokes aside, though, I am wondering if it is a a mono leader clip kind of a deal and these things which you don't ever know that drives me absolutely batty is are you doing something wrong or is it just your bite rates a little different than somebody else's I don't know All right, Caden. Okay, so Richard's saying he doesn't he doesn't know for sure, but he's caught him on fluoro. So if that does help anybody on the 
play along. I know I'm not catching anything, and I'm 25 minutes in. I think Josh said he was 35 minutes in before he finally caught one. I can tell you now, patience in this one is definitely going to be key because I am not patient at this one. This one's already, this is, this to me has been like the very first time when I played scores from the bottom going for the flounder. Now I'm definitely going to appreciate that comp after playing in this one. I would assume that there is Richard. Richard had asked, that, or he's not sure that there's different weather patterns. Most of the time, the wind speeds and stuff usually do vary, as well as the temps. So, I'm not sure. Okay, I got a bite. Will he take it? No, he won't. We did have a bite, though. That's promising. Should I leave it there and see if he comes back? I'm uncertain if I'm even going to get a, a fish at this point. Almost halfway through the comp. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking, Richard. This reminds me, but worse than the first time I played scores from the bottom. I do want to get better at the majority of the comps, or most all of them, but I don't know if this one has enough, uh, enough for me to keep playing in it. I did get a bite at 250 out, so maybe I'll, uh, I would like to catch at least one. But I do not know if that's going to happen. Key note. If you catch one and you go to reel it in, there will be a signature splash. Alright, yeah, thanks, man. What's your first stream going to be, Tony? Your first stream should be a custom ill competition. If the what <laughs> fork? Fellas. This is hard. Hard for a guy to stomach. And 
again, anybody watching this back, the number one thing is supposed to be this large cut bait. But I'm trying something different just for the hell of it. But I'm pretty sure if you look at that mark right there, a 5.9 pounder on huge cut bait. Right there. So I did get him to bite huge cut, huge cut bait this morning. But that was then. I'm going to attempt chicken liver now just to test it. And now with the slow fishing comes the pain. Also known as rain. It's possible that I don't catch a single eel. I'm halfway through the tournament and I am fishless. What about hook size in this thing, boys? Is the general consensus 2-0? My big, biggest gut instinct tells me they're going to be a certain range, a certain range out. Okay, and Richard said it's normally never this slow. For him. Okay, and Tony did verify that 2.0 is supposed to be the perfect, perfect hook size. It's also possible maybe I should have rotated down to the bottom a long time ago. Maybe it was active first. Richard's saying 1020. He just stuck with 20. But I'm pretty sure the general consensus I've heard from Fork and Tony, I think even Bergy, Richard, everybody's saying 20, large cut bait for the most part. Yep, Fork, Fork just confirmed it. Yep, 20 is a good hook size, guys. And hopefully when you play in it, it's not this slow. Okay, that does appear to be, is that not an oversized deal? Did he spot that in? Ross V-Star has got a 10-pounder. I'm not sure if that's oversized or not. Now that I've set another three minutes without a bite, I'm going to lightly reel some in. Just trying to drag it along and see if something happens. I've yet to get a bite just for letting it sit there. I'm going to take it around 300. If I don't get nothing, take it to 275, so on and so forth, and see if they're just out at a certain range. I'm going to give it around 45 seconds at 300, and I'm going to kind of do what I do when I play the flounder thing, when I finally started figuring that out. So... I don't know if that's a key to this eel thing. Again, I've never played in this before myself. I can tell you for the 14th time, this one is going to take and test your patience. I'm now going to go to 275. I'm sorry, Kane, I might have missed your question. A 
little cussing's all right, Caden. Just try to keep it PG-13 the best that you can. F word every once in a while. Don't hurt my feelings. Just don't go crazy with it. Okay, I did finally get one, maybe. Unless this is a... It's got to be an L, right? And that was at 275. I'm looking for an eel splash though. Is there an eel splash? Yes, there is an eel splash. We do have a nice eel. Fork is saying watch for the splash. Pretty sure I've seen a splash out there. This is the most exciting fish I've had in a long time. Okay, this is an eel. And it was 35 minutes in again. That's insane. Thirty-five minutes in. If anybody watches this back, for sure, patience is an understatement in this one. You got the monster? You're welcome, man. That's what we do. Everybody helps everybody one way or the other. Now the question is, is this, this a unique or is it just a big trophy? A nine pound. Nine pound eel. Off a of chicken liver. So chicken liver does work, fellas. Thank you, thank you. I would, uh, I can tell you now it was off of this, this mark and between this mark and this mark. I don't have any marks left. Uni, uni, uni. Uh, now, do we know, Richard, is it smarter to cast? Let me pause this for a second. Now, is this smarter to cast right back out? Or can you get multiple unis from one spot, in other words, Richard? Are you better off rotating and going for a uni somewhere else? That would be my question. Or do you just stay and ride it out? That was 275 foot out, if that does help anybody, if you noticed... I didn't get a bite until 35 minutes in as that was 275 foot out uh, where I caught that. I'm thinking I should rotate. Yeah, I got another mark down here as well. Uh, the odd part is, uh, again, my other close mark. Now, this is when I was spotting for the recatch. Uh, I think I got flounder, even believe it or not, that close. But, but I somehow I think I'd put them mixed together. Unfortunately, I didn't save it. Uh, but I'm pretty sure you could almost spot for these things, man. I don't know why you couldn't. Uh, where are you trying to Where are you trying to level up at?
Hello, Bam. Now, since I caught that unique at 275, I'm actually going to try uh, to do the same thing. I'm slowly going to work that back. I'll start at 300, but my guess is if I'm going to get another bite, I've just noticed that in a flounder comp before, whether they're 250 out or 325, that's kind of a, a key thing. Now, it could have just been uh, you don't catch anything for the first 35 minutes because it is ironic that uh, almost to the minute, Josh had told me on an hour comp, it took him 35 minutes to get his first fish. And I was pretty much at that same mark at, at the same time. Maybe not the same mark, but I was at that same point in the comp uh, 35 minutes in before I caught a caught one eel. It worked, bam, it worked. And again, for the 10th time, when I put these things up and label them, it's not me saying that as a guide. It's just me doing my own personal experience for the most part, uh, trying different baits, that sort of thing as well. But I would assume if everybody's using large cut bait on a hook 2.0, uh, that should work just fine for you. But again, I like to have different things to rotate to. So I'm going to leave this at 275 and see if there's anything different over here. Uh, I haven't put this one up yet. Bam, it's my last one to put up uh, minus Crank the River. I've actually, this is uh, Length Matters. It's at Ghent. It's the three longest eel you can catch in an hour. Pretty slow, pretty slow comp. Took me 35 minutes to get my first fish. Also, I don't know if it makes any difference. I am on fluoro line with a monoliter trimmed down. Oh, and Ross had sent me some marks for this too. I do not have the uh, capability of accepting any marks. I'm maxed out at 1500. I'll try to see if I can erase them and help you guys. Uh, and put up a couple marks if that helps anybody. I'll leave it here for about another minute. If I don't get a bite, I'll take it to 250. Level 26, the best place to level up? Probably Cali, I would assume. Or no, when does Cali open up? 34? Yeah, probably white moose then. Maybe white moose. 
Level 24. It's been a, hold on a second, I got a phone call. Alrighty guys, I'm back. Yep, it doesn't seem I'm getting the same results down here. I'm going to pull it into 250. That boat is extremely loud, by the way. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with the Everglades, V. I don't know how big your gear is. You can actually farm the drum and the snook or the uh, just farm bass if you wanted to. The tiger shark. I'm. I think there's only a bull shark in this game. There's a fighter shark. I don't know if there's a tiger shark, Caden. Level 30 for whatever that place is called. Well, depends on if you set your. I just don't set your anchor, Caden. It won't be that bad. As long as you don't set the anchor. Yeah, just don't set your anchor on them, Shark. You'll be all right. might actually get another bite. Nope, I'm not going to. Yeah, this is an extremely slow comp. I cannot believe that mess.
Josh, you can share it if you want to. It doesn't hurt my feelings. But one thing I will say to both of you, I want you guys to be able to shake hands and get along because I don't like when people fight on my channels. So just moving forward on that. And what I'd like even more is just one more bite. Good grief, this one. This one's even tested my patience. All right, just in the event that In the event that I don't catch uh, something else with this. And as well, like I said, I don't mind people sharing on my channel. I know like if, if I was Bubbles Way and somebody came onto his channel, he would smack him around for even saying anything. So, but I'm cool like that, so I don't mind. But like I said, uh, just if you guys are ever going to have negativity towards one another, try to do it... Uh, Try to do it elsewhere. That's all I ask moving forward. And I know I've had a lot of people ask me to do leveling guides as well. I will work on that at some point and give you my own vantage point on how I leveled up when I get time. As of right now, I'm having fun doing the comp thing. Yeah, yeah, you're fine, Bam. Like I said, I have i don't know how many people I've let post their stuff on there and I don't mind I'm not a selfish person but I've, I've had a lot of people ask me to do leveling guide I'll, I'll st I will get on it at some point I just won't be uh, too soon And I don't even know if I'll call it the farming guide. Mine will probably just be, uh, or leveling guide, mine will just be how I farmed this lake. How I farmed that lake. I'll do mine. I'll, my leveling thing will be different than probably everybody else's. Mine's just going to be how to farm Quanchkin, how to farm Everglades, how to farm this. And I'll just show you how I farmed it and masked my hundreds of millions. Yeah, yeah, he will. Bubbles, do, Bubbles, don't. If you mention, try to self-promote yourself at all on his channel, he gets pissed. But I, I'm not like that because it's about the, it's about the uh, community. But like I said, just moving forward. If you guys, one thing to have, everybody's gonna have a little disagreements, but I just don't want, don't want any shouting matches in my, uh, in my chat. But that's all water under the bridge, right? Dude, what the hell? Fork, you guaranteed me a uni with large cut bait, and I got it on chicken liver. You guys think I just got the horrible bite rate, or I did something horribly wrong in this thing? Or this is what you expect? Oh, hold on one second. Let me do something because I know I didn't score very well in this. Uh, a friend on my friends list, actually uh, a really good player. I'm going to uh, share the marks that he shared me. Yeah, this one, is, I, I was kind of anticipating this, Bam. It feels worse than when I played the, the Flounder the first time. But I'm actually going to share you, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Ross v Star shared me this, and I... I shared him something the other day to help him on a stillhead, and he said he returned the favor. So he did return the favor uh, and sent me several uh, marks here, but I'm going to have to clear some stuff uh, in order. I don't need a bream thing here, so I'll delete the bream. 
He did send me a couple really good marks, I think. So, uh, well, there's another eel. What do I not need? I don't think I need that. Okay, so to help anybody on this play along, I'm going to mark the marks that he gave me. And let's see where they're at. Okay, they're not over here. Not there. Okay, it appears his marks are, must be all over here. Okay, there's a 10 pound mark on an eel. Where's his other one? That is not it. Okay, so it seems to me, guys, anybody doing this in a, in a play along, V Star sent me these two right here. This looks like to be the hot spot for him. Uh, and I hope this helps some of you guys out now. Again, uh, the rewards aren't stupendous in this. This is going to be a comp that you're probably going to go to sleep in. I'll go ahead and cast, go over here and just kind of show you these marks again. Again, this is not a guide. This is just me and my personal experience in this thing. Uh, this is probably one I would avoid unless there's nothing else on for me. Uh, it's not fast paced enough for me, but to each their own. If it's something that you guys like, uh, again, here's a couple marks. Uh, now, again, I did catch one. Uh, if you guys know the nine pounder, but I'm going to assume this whole area in through here is probably where you want to focus on before going down to the other spot. And again, keynote two, uh, hook two O. Now I did catch this one on the recat, so there's there's plenty of marks for anybody that might happen to watch this back. Again, the general rule of thumb, everybody pretty much is saying uh, large cut bait two O. I did happen to catch one on chicken liver. Maybe it was a fluke, maybe it wasn't, but that's at least another bait that did work. Um, as well as for me, I found it to be 275 foot out. Who really knows? I did just cast to that guy's marks, and that's a good 300 foot out there. Yeah, yeah, and that's what I, that's the only reason I was bringing that up, guys. I like when everybody gets along, so. Like I said, I'm not a guy that likes drama. I like getting along with everybody. And ultimately, I'm just here to make friends and have fun. Also, guys, don't go from one extreme to the other. Now, there's no making out in my chat either. No kissing in the chat, boys. I'm just playing. Glad to see everybody's, glad to see everybody's getting along, man. That's what I like to see. We're all trying to beat this crazy game together, right?
yeah, I don't know about this comp, guys. Uh, I'm not really going to give it a rating. I'm just going to say uh, this is probably one that's definitely, again, not to beat it in the ground, this is one that you're going to have to have ultimate patience for. I, I, now that this is the last one that I've put up on my channel, being the first time that I've played in it, uh, wow. This one, I don't know if there's something I'm missing, just a bite rate. Uh, maybe maybe I just got dealt that card. I did get one unique, so I'm not going to complain horribly, but to sit for an hour and only catch one fish, uh, I'd probably say it's not one that I'm going to target and practice for, uh, but again, to each their own. And again, that's why I said the cool thing about Fishing Planet in general, everybody's kind of got their things they like to fish for this one here for me is just uh just a little slow and i'm gonna have a buzzer beater that i probably won't get in <laughs> Man, this is a, oh well, we know it's not a unique. Just in closing on this as well, as that steamboat's going through loud as could be. Uh, one good thing is, I think with large or with chicken liver, uh, definitely large cut bait. I did not miss one time, and this wasn't huge, but uh, there's two ill. One did not count, so. And closing, just to save this up on the channel, um, yeah, that wasn't the most exciting of comps. Again, to each their own, you might have patience for this one. Uh, again, this would probably be the only reason I would play in this if there was absolutely nothing else on and I was board fishing for something else. But again, if it's something that you like and you like that kind of a challenge, uh, so be it. But the, the unique I did catch on was a chicken liver on a number 2-0. Now, I did... Uh, trim a monoliter down on braid i don't think that probably really mattered uh, i know richard played in this one he actually does enjoy it uh, again one of those slower paced things so if you got something you're wanting to do on your phone it might be a great comp if you're if you're looking to do something at the same time and you don't really care about your bite rate might be a great comp for you so like i said i'm not going to give it a, a rating per se just just for me personally uh there, there's funner comps for me to participate in this but you might like this one so Again, if anything, I just gave you a general foundation. You got plenty of marks. Thank you to uh, Ross V Star, uh, Josh, Richard, Fork, uh, anybody else that kind of commented on this. So, if anything, you got marks. You got the basic hook size that everybody's using. Uh, now, again, any of these baits might work. Uh, I would say that crawfish and any of the shrimps that you're going to use, you might pick up a mullet or something like that, as well as, uh, as you all well know, the flounder, like the uh, crawfish cutting, those sort of things. But I would want to say. Uh, your cut bait would probably be the best, uh, chicken liver as well, probably even medium cut bait. So in closing, that does conclude this play along for the length matters here on Fishing Planet. And uh, I'm, I have to go to work again, and then I'm going to come back, and I got to think of three comps in a row to do. When I get back, I will play in this. Um I'll be back here in about 30 minutes or so. Thanks, Josh. Yep, yep. Uh, so I got plenty of comps to play in here coming back when I get back from work. So I'll be gone for about half hour, 45 minutes. I'll be back, and then we got three comps in a row to play in. I think Big Red Fish, if I can find where I'm at. Um, wow. My game's lagging. What's up with this? All right. I do have three comps to play in when I get back, so we will see you then. All right, man. We'll see you later, bam. See you later, everybody. I'll be back here in about 45 minutes.